All right, let me explain what we're doing here, because this is something that I used to do regularly a long time ago, but haven't done in a couple of years. Uh, what we're doing here today is I'm going to write what I think it would be a good rebalance for Street Fighter 6. We've got Season 2 incoming pretty soon, so we are going to be getting a balance patch. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and rebalance the game myself, but here's the kicker. If I was going to do like a full rebalance, it would take me 500,000 years to finish. I'd be writing until I grow old. So what I'm going to do is the thing that I used to do, which is the two change challenge. This was something that I used to do in Street Fighter V. I'm going to limit myself to a maximum of two changes per character, which I think sort of forces you to think about like the core issues of a character a lot more than if you can just make as many changes as possible. And also it stops this video from being 17 hours long, which is good too. So let's get to it. I'm also going to be getting some help from uh, chat as we go, because there are some characters in this game that I genuinely have no fucking clue how to make work. <laughs> uh, not naming any names, but let's just say that a certain descendant of T-Hawk might be difficult to make work properly with only two changes. So we're going we're gonna to start with system mechanics. So I'm going to count that as like a character, almost. Uh, if I was being particularly greedy, I could do two changes per mechanic. I don't think I actually need that. I actually think that you can do this with two changes just to all the system mechanics because um, I don't feel as strongly about the system mechanics as some people do. I know a lot of people are talking about how perfect parry needs to get shot, but I don't really think perfect parry is that big of an issue. I kind of agree with Takedo's take, which is that perfect parry is kind of necessary with how aggressive this game is to have some kind of factor that mitigates rushdown. Uh, so I'm going to say change number one. This is my change number one. Yeah, the, the, the common one is that the common suggestion is that Drive Rush should be upgraded to being a punish counter. I would go one further than that and I would make it like a forced crumple state as, it, as if you've been hit by like a, a DI, for example. So that if you if you check a, if you check a Drive Rush, because if, if you think about it right, imagine imagine I punch you in the face except you're also running at me as fast as Usain Bolt. Like, you're running straight at me at, like, Usain Bolt speeds, and I punch you in the face. That's going to do a shitload of extra damage, right? That's going to knock you down. So I feel like that's kind of, like, my version of that, is that if you're running at me at full speed, and I, and I hit you, you really should crumple. So that's, that's change number one. So uh, anyway, where was I? Yeah, second change to the system mechanics, I'm going to do a universal reduction to meter gain. Right now, I feel like one of the reasons this game is so explosive is that you build so much bar so quickly. People have access to level... Like, I've had rounds where I have level 3 in the first round. I don't think you should be getting level 3 in round 1. That seems like a bit much. Like, even in combos... Let me show you an example of, like, how silly the meter build in this game can get. Yeah, there we go. So I, I don't think you really should be building more than one bar of super from a single combo. Especially when that combo is doing 6,300 damage. Clearly we need to nerf Aki specifically. But this isn't an Aki unique thing. A lot of characters in this game can build an absolute ton of bar from just doing BNBs and stuff. I could do this on a character by character basis, but I'm just going to put as a general rule, reduce meter gain across the board. All right, let's start with the characters then. All right, I'm just going to do them in the order they appear in the Street Fighter character menu. So we're going to start with an unusual one. We're going to go with Ed. I'm going to go with the obvious one, first of all. The one that everyone probably figured out on day one. Stan Jab needs more range. Yeah, that's the obvious one. I think we can all agree on that. But I'm hesitant to give him too much because I still don't know if this character is strong or not. So, uh... I don't know, does he even need a second change? It's it's so early, I can't really call it. We're not giving him an overhead, sorry. That's that's way too early. Oh, that's a good suggestion, actually. I like that one. Make it Making his level one faster. I like that one, because right now, Ed has, like, three different reversals, and all of them lose to Meaty Jab. So I, th I feel like EXDP should be slow. That's kind of part of Ed's design, even going back to Street Fighter V. 
So I'm going to say level one super startup. It's currently 13 frames. So let's say 10. There we go. Two changes for Ed. Uh, up next, we have Aki. <laughs> and this is very obvious. All attacks now deal 10,000 damage. And we're moving on. Okay. Problem solved. I think we can all agree that's what she needs. Pretty fair. Pretty normal. Let me be serious real quick. Uh, so the one thing that I've been harping on about is that her anti-airs need help. I feel like having a reliable anti-air would be really nice. I'm just saying uh, heavy whip, which is quarter circle forward heavy punch, needs to be frame one air invulnerable. Right now it's frame six, which is stupid. I don't know why it's frame six. It needs to be frame one. This just means that she has a reliable anti-air now. This is, to be honest, like, I've said this before, but, like, if Aki gets absolutely no other changes, I would be happy for just this. Yeah, this game is so full of reaction checks that having bad anti airs is really rough. As for a second change, I guess this is, like, a free, <laughs> a free pass for me. This might be too broken. I don't really know about this one. I'm just going to put it down because it's just, I think it would be fun more than anything. We'll go 5HK, start up, reduced to 8 frames. This is currently 9 frames. Her stand heavy kick. Reducing it to 8 frames would give her a ton of new punishes and more importantly it would give her a ton of new combo routes. She'd be able to do like punish counter jab into stand heavy kick and drive rush jab into stand heavy kick. But I don't think she needs this. I just, I'm just filling space here. I'm, I'd be happy with just this. We'll call, that, we'll call that one like an optional change. That's just me asking for nice stuff. Uh, up next we have Rashid. We are working backwards through the DLC characters. Um, Rashid, first of all, I know what I'm going to do here. Uh, Rashid cannot build super meter while level 2 is active. That's, to me, pretty obvious. His, his looping, we were talking about meter build earlier, but his looping, like, endless gameplay once he gets level 2 going is so stupid. The level 2 should be strong. Like, the level 2... Even with this change, it would still be very strong, but it just means that he can't loop level 2 into level 2 into level 2 into level 2 if you just do this. And I guess we should give him a buff to make up for that. So let's say Heavy Punch Mixer Air Invuln from frame 1. So this is this is the same exact change that Aki, I gave to Aki. I don't know why Capcom started making anti-airs that suck for the DLC characters. Like, I feel like every character in the game should have at least one anti-air that's super reliable. I think that's I think that's a good good couple of changes there. Okay, uh, what's next? Cami. Cami is extremely strong right now. <laughs> Quite a few players are putting her uh, like top three. Her level two needs to be better. I don't know how I feel about buffing Cami. If we're if we're buffing her level two, we need to nerf something else. Crouch heavy punch nerf. Crouch heavy punch should probably do more pushback. Does that sound reasonable to you guys? Make her level two a bit better, but make crouch heavy punch not leave her like inside your face afterwards on block how do we even make cami's level two good in one line just in i'd maybe increase the damage on non-animation connect because the grounded connect already does pretty good damage i think the grounded connect is fine but just maybe do it slightly more on air connect two hp push back on block increase i think that's about the best i can offer for this character she's hard to change I'm going to leave it with this, I think, because I don't want to spend ages working on that. But I think Kami is very hard to do in two changes. All right. Speaking of characters that are hard to do in two changes, I don't know what we're going to do here. Lily. What the hell are we doing with Lily? I've said this before a bunch of times, but I, don't, I think this character needs like a complete redesign from the ground up. So I don't think two changes is going to solve this. Delete. Remake. <laughs> I hate her genuinely. One rework to nerf her. Yeah, this I think Lily is like impossible to fix in two changes. The best I can offer is like Windclad EXDP is now in Voln on startup. So she has an actual DP if she has stocks. Absolutely not. No. You just made her toxic as hell. That's what I'm saying. That's why this is such a badly designed character because she's not strong. She's not one of the strongest characters in the game. But it feels like every single buff that I could theoretically give her would make her so stupid. She's already stupid. It's going to make her even more stupid. Like, what What do I do here? Do we just give up? Do we just say unfixable in two changes? 
<laughs> Unfixable with 10 changes? All right. This sounds like it's going to be an impossible s solution. I, th I think we're just going to have to take the L on this one and accept that Lily is probably not fixable in two changes. Every buff that I can think of just feels wrong for this character, even though she does probably need buffs. All right. Uh, Zangief. This should be a bit more doable, I think. Now, I'm not a Geef player, but I, this is... Here's a couple of ideas I had. Tell, tell me what you guys think of this as Geef players. I'm going to put this up first, and then the Geef players in chat can tell me if I'm a horrible scrub that should never offer suggestions again. How's that looking? No, no, too much. He'd still suck. No, fixed. Won't fix him. Damn. We're getting both sides of the spectrum on this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the middle ground and say that right now half of chat is telling me that Geef is still unworkable garbage, and the other half is telling me that I've just made him completely broken. And say that that averages out to probably a decent set of changes. Uh okay. JP. JP JP's an interesting one because he's already been nerfed a bit in the previous balance patch. He's still really good, though. I feel like we need to nerf level 2. It's been too long since I played JP. Like, look at the drive situation. I don't think you should be able to perfect parry a jab, reverse the corner, and also get 3.5 bars of drive damage. That's kind of the issue. So many rounds against JP get lost because of this exact interaction. If a DI has already landed in uh, juggle, the second DI is reduced to 0 0.5 bars of drive damage. So that reduces it from a 3 bar drive damage to 2.5. For JP only. There you go. It's not a universal change, it's a character change. No other character can even do this! Number 2. Oh, uh, 2 MP hurtbox increase. I don't even have to think about that one. I should have done that one first, honestly. This is still extremely stupid. For a character who's supposed to be like mostly defensive and playing at a distance, this this button right here, Drive Rush Crouch Medium Punch, is borderline impossible to check at high level. Like the amount of times I've been opened up, even though I've been explicitly looking for this approach, because the hurt box is non-existent. This is just a god button. I'm okay with this thing being disjoint, but that is way too much. I'm not saying you should just like make the hurt box extend the entire way, but it should probably extend to like about here. All right, next character. Who we got? Uh, Marissa. Mm, I actually kind of think Marissa's in a good spot right now. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I actually kind of think that she's fine with no changes because the characters that are like above her are getting brought down a bit. I feel like if you nerf the top tiers in this game, Marissa's in a pretty good spot. Nerf the damage? See, again, I think Marissa should be the character that's allowed to hit like a truck. Like, when we get to... Spoiler alert, when we get to DJ and Luke, we're going to see some damage reductions. But I think Marissa's identity is hitting like a fucking truck. That is her visual design, and that is her gameplay design. So I feel like she should be the character that puts you in an early grave if you do a bad EXDP. She's fine, smile. But yeah, I'm actually going to leave Marissa untouched. You said two changes? There we go. Manon. Now, the change that I've heard a lot of Manon players ask for is they want Crouch Medium Punch to be faster. I don't know how I feel about that. This, this is another tough one. I've noticed the trend that all of the grapplers have been very difficult to do. It's hard to buff them without making them broken. Yeah, here's the thing. If you give Manon Oki on either command grab or hit grab, she just instantly skyrockets. So I feel like you have to be a bit more gentle with the Manon changes and just do like make a couple of her normals a bit better. Yeah, actually, that's a good suggestion. The anti fire will move. Um, I don't know what that thing's called. Spinny kick through fireballs should actually go 
through fireballs. <laughs> Uh, this thing is way too slow, and it loses to fireballs all the time, especially slow ones. Like, I've watched Manon players try and fight Guile, and that spin through the fireballs looks completely useless. Number two... Uh, should we do it? Should we just give the Manon players what they want? I mean, that is what they're asking for, but it seems too much to me. Make her drive rush faster? I can do that, actually. That's actually, that's actually less of a buff than this. Let's go with that. Drive rush slightly faster. We're not going to make this into like an, a good drive rush, but we are going to make it slightly faster. Because like, I found something out recently which made me feel kind of sorry for Manon players. Let me show you. Hang on. So like, whenever people ask me how to punish Aki doing this, I always tell them literally just drive rush into a light and it's guaranteed. But it turns out that Manon quite literally has such a bad drive rush that she cannot punish this at max range with Drive Rush Light. I think you can do Stand Heavy Kick. Yeah, she does have a punish on it. This isn't a specific example to prove that she has no punish on it. She can just do Stand Heavy Kick. That is a punish. But the point the point here is that her Drive Rush just... It's not... When I say increasing the speed, I don't mean the actual, like, startup speed or anything. I just mean the movement speed. Because she just goes nowhere. She has no horizontal range on her drive rush. So yeah, just make it a little bit faster. But for reference of what a normal drive rush, uh, drive rush punish here looks like, let's go with like Ryu. Someone with like an average drive rush. This is what it generally looks like. But like, there's a couple of characters that can't do anything. But anyway, this is getting too, too deep in the weeds with Aki stuff. So yeah, let's just go with that. Uh, next up we have DJ. Break his legs, remove drive rush. We gotta do damage decreases. I think that's the most obvious thing. The way that I think DJ should work if he's balanced properly is he should basically function the exact same way he works now, but he should kill you in four hits rather than two. He should do the same damage as um Kimberly. Like it, I think I think DJ can keep his absolutely insane movement speed and everything and his options. So I'm just gonna, even though this is gonna require changes to a lots of lots of things, I'm just gonna put overall damage reduction. I'm gonna cheat a little bit here and put that as one change. Remove two MK knockdown. No, I don't think that's necessary. I think I think the the second change that I would make here, I'm gonna kind of overall chat a little bit here and say that I think the the best possible second change would be this. Uh, what is it? MK Sobat, I think. Is MK the one where he just does the single kick? And it's minus six. Yeah, that move is so stupid to just throw out in neutral at the moment. Like you watch DJ players playing neutral and so many DJ players just do sit at this range 24 seven and then just do this. Because this move has a great hitbox, great range, and it leaves you minus six at a ridiculous distance where it's almost never punishable. So like, I feel this, sh I think this should stay minus six. I think that's okay. Maybe a little bit more negative, but I'll, I'll leave it at minus six for the time being. But rather than, let's say, rather than being like here on block, you should end like here. So that like most characters can do like a jab or something, unless you space it perfectly. Like in theory, it should still be safe at like absolute max range. I think that's okay. If you space it perfectly, it should still be difficult to punish. But right now, like, DJ players are just misspacing this thing like crazy and still being, un like, completely unpunishable. Uh, up next, we have E Honda. Mm, I have no clue on this one. I know very little about Honda. And I don't really know how you can fix him without making changes to perfect parry. Faster walk speed? I mean, I'll take Nassim's word for it, because Nassim is like a Honda main, and one of the best Honda mains out there, so... I'll go for it. Because it doesn't sound that big of a deal. I'll let you have that. Anything else? You got two changes. You've already used up 50% of your allowance on what I consider to be a pretty minor change. Reduced pushback on all headbutts? See, the thing is, you guys are thinking in terms of like, how annoying the character is, and not in terms of like, what they need to be decent. Like, I agree, the idea of buffing Honda makes me want to vomit. But at the same time, realistically, he is a very bad character and probably does need it. You gotta think with your brain instead of your heart. My heart says, throw this character into a wood chipper. My brain says, we probably should give him some buffs. Seven frame normal? 
Do you not have a seven frame normal? I think we can extend to that. All right, I'll let you have that one. Which normal though? I, mean, I think crouch medium punch because down medium punch is the plus one, right? Let's go for two MP, seven frame start up. I'll go with that. That doesn't sound too excessive. Dalsim. Fix his, oh, fix his drive reversal. I don't know. See, actually, that's the thing. Like, I didn't even mention drive reversals when we were talking about system mechanic changes. Drive reversals do probably need some help. But for the time being, I'll leave it. No, in Vuln level 1, hell no. Absolutely not. That's a good one, actually. In Indivisible, I like that one. I was just thinking about that because I was like, okay, we don't want to make his level 1 a reversal because that would be fucked up. But his level 2, which does have invincibility, is really bad right now. So I think... Uh, level 2 super can hit crouchers point blank. I think that's reasonable. If someone presses a crouch jab in Dalsim's face and he wakes up level 2 and risks 2 bars, I think that's fine, honestly. He's he's risking 2 bars just to punish a low, more, a low normal. You guys are overreacting. Maybe this is the former Dalsim player in me, but I think this is fine. My inner Dalsim down player is making a rare reappearance. Okay, here's another one. Hear me out. Hear me out. Before you hit me with the nose, hear me out right now. Just give me a second. I'll explain myself to the court real quick, and then you can decide if I deserve to be executed or not. All right? Just let me, let me say my piece. Regain your composure and put down your pitchforks. All right, first of all, this normal is 14 frames start up. Like, you have to press this mad early to get an anti-air with it. Right? That's evidence, piece of evidence number one. Piece number two, if you get the anti-air with this, you get a juggle, but only on counter hit or punish counter, like this, so. You see, so if I get a counter hit with this, you can get a juggle off it. But here's the problem. Here's the issue that, that I found annoying when I was playing Dalsim like week one. The only way that you can actually get a combo off his back heavy punch is if you drive rush cancel it, because nothing else will reach at this distance. Like, you see, like, nothing else will connect. The only way that you can actually convert off this is the drive rush cancel. And that costs three bars of drive. And right now, right now, there is no way to confirm this. Every single time a Dowson player anti-airs with back heavy punch into drive rush, they have to commit to the drive rush before they even know if it's going to counter hit or not. And if it doesn't counter hit, and they just get the regular hit, congratulations, you just wasted three bars for nothing. So Dowson players right now are gambling half their drive gauge on a pure guess of whether the anti-air is going to counter hit or not. I don't know, man. Chat seems to absolutely hate this one. But my response to that is, it's my list, deal with it. <laughs> Make your own damn lists. Don't care, didn't ask. Feel free to make your own lists. If you find this one hideously offensive, I encourage you to make your own. All right, next character, Blanca. We already talked about this earlier, but I'll go over it again. The first one's really obvious. Blanca Ball does 0 0.5 bars of drive gauge damage on block if performed during level two. So just to just to go over this a little bit again, because we did cover it earlier. As it is right now, Blanca Ball does one whole bar of drive gauge damage on block. And it's also safe on block. But it's designed with counterplay in mind. So you can parry this, you can perfect parry it, you can DI it, you can intercept it while it's traveling with a uh, like a DP or a good normal. It's fairly well balanced right now. So if you block it, you do lose a big chunk chunk of drive gauge. But there is quite a lot of ways to, to counterplay it. You can neutral jump to avoid it. You've got options. The problem is that once you activate level 2, those options disappear. It becomes plus, and it still does one bar of drive gauge damage, plus the extra from the follow-ups. So a simple sequence like just doing, say, I don't know, like this. Something really basic like that is plus seven on block and takes, uh, how much drive gauge? 2.2 bars of drive gauge, more than a third of your total resources. And he can do this multiple times. Like 
like just I don't I just think that's too much. And the the problem is that if you get tempted into trying to parry this because of how obnoxious the drive gauge damage is. Blanca can just do that. So every single time you think I might parry this to try and mitigate some risk, he can just go into the down ball and then just walk up throw you. And that's going to lose you another bar of drive gauge. So just defending against this, it just feels like none of your defensive mechanics really work against it. You also can't DI it. I don't know why it's sometimes gapless, but not always. Yeah, you can't DI it. Uh, you can't reversal it for some reason. He just passes through most reversals. There's just too there's too, there's just too many ways that he can just bypass your defensive options and just destroy your drive gauge. So I still think the level two should be strong. I'm not going to touch most of it. I'm just going to say that the initial blanker ball at the start of the level two sequence should be reduced from one bar to half a bar. I think that's pretty reasonable. I haven't seen anyone scre screaming at me in chat, so I'm going to go with that's a good one. Number two. One thing I will say that is very fucking stupid right now is this thing. Instant air EX blanker ball. Um, a lot of people think this should be not plus or whatever, because right now this, this punishes throws and it's plus six on block. For some idiotic reason. I don't mind this being plus and beating throws. My only criticism is that if you bait this move out, and force it to whiff, it has like no whiff recovery. Like the amount of times that I've tried to punish this move on whiff and Blanker is just active the moment that he hits the floor. So I'm thinking like, keep it the way it is, but make it so that if you do actually bait it out and force it to whiff, this probably should have some recovery. So it should st still be plus, it's still a very good tool, still beats throws, still plus on block, but at the very least, if you somehow manage to make this thing whiff, Blanca players should at least get punished for it. Alright. Uh, okay. Uh, up next we got Ken. I've been saying this since like day one. The two, I think right now the two most obnox obnoxious things about Ken is that Jinrai Low has very little risk. You can just kind of do it on block. And also the full screen EX Fireball plus Drive Rush is kind of brain dead approach for Ken. So I, he, like the idea here is that he can still do EX Fireball Drive Rush, but not from quite so many ranges. I think, I think Dragon Lash is fine. Like I, I feel like Jinrai is a lot more annoying than Dragon Lash. Dragon Lash is a kind of a reactions test, but once you start to get into the habit of like perfect powering it or jabbing it, I don't mind Dragon Lash much. It does have well-established counterplay. If I know my opponent is going to Dragon Lash, I can destroy them for it. Yeah, I think, I think Dragon Lash is fine. Especially if you nerf this stuff, he should have some things that are decent. So, I think this is fair. I'm sure the Ken players are going to say he's now like unusable bottom one. Z tier character, but I think that's fine. Uh, Jury. Fireball should go away if you hit her. That's a good one, actually. That's a good one. I like that. I kind of like that. The thing is, like her Fireball plus Drive Rush combo is brain dead, but it's hard to make it not brain dead without removing Fireball or removing Drive Rush. Like that. If you hit her while she's unga bungering straight at you with a fireball plus drive rush, the fireball, I think the fireball should just go away. She's plus nine there, by the way. You gotta change it for everyone then? No, I don't. <laughs> this is my balance patch. I'm writing the rules here. What, why do I have to change it for everyone? Aki has the same thing, correct. Aki and Juri are different characters, and sometimes a thing can be justified on one character and not on another. For example, I think it's okay that Geef has an SPD. What I wouldn't do is give Luke an SPD. We're doing it. Don't care, didn't ask, plus you main Juri. I don't know about number two. I feel like just that one change is okay. All right, there we go. This is, this is a good nerf, because this doesn't actually affect Juri from a gameplay perspective, but it upsets Juri mains. That's why it's the perfect change. All right, Kimberly. Are people going to hate me for this one? Look, okay, I played I played Kimberly during the betas, all right? I think that would be fine. My my hot take for Street Fighter 6 is still the fact that I think Kimberly was mad overrated during the betas. Guile was better, uh Ken was better, Luke was better, Chun was better. 
This the thing is, you, this wasn't what this wasn't what made Kimberly strong in the in the beta. The re the reason Kimberly was so good in beta was because of this. If I really wanted to ruin your life, I would say uh, Stan Heavy Punch. Like, if you want me to actually ruin your day, that's the one I would do. But we're not going to do that one. Yeah, I think we need to do we, we need to do something with her uh, her bomb reloads because right now it's so unwieldy. How about this? Rather than making any changes to reload, why don't we just say... How about that? Because this, this means that if, if you've used all of your... If you've used up all of your spray cans, then you get the shit version of level 1. But if you have any cans stocked, you're not forced to use it. You get a slightly better level 1. Right now, if you have if you have any spray cans, and you do level one, it does I think what two thousand? Yeah, two thousand damage, which isn't even that high. You get two thousand damage, and you also waste one of your most precious resources. And by the way, you don't get a choice in the matter right here. This is one of the reasons why I think her level one sucks, is because it forces you to use a spray can just to do average damage. I mean, you could you could make it so that the can is optional and you can just like hold a button to do the follow up. But the problem with that is that 99% of the time you would never want to use it. And so effectively her um, like her effective damage output with level one would just permanently be the bad one because Kim players would almost never choose to do the uh, the can. So effectively, she'd have an 1800 damage level one. OK, Guile. Guy, the thing about Guile is that it's, he's so simple and his game plan is so, like, formulaic that if you make any changes to, like, boom, you just instantly kill him or make him broken. So I'm going to say uh, 5mk nerfed as an anti-air. You should use your damn flash kick. There's lots of ways you could approach the Guile nerfs, but I can't find one that doesn't have a bunch of unintended spin-off effects. Maybe just re reduce the range. That's another option you could do. Keep Stand Fierce as like a, a far, unusually fast heavy, but like reduce its range. For a move that's 7 frame startup and a cancelable heavy, I don't know why it goes like half screen. That's about all I can come up with now. Alright, let's go with that. chun -Li. Now, depending on who you ask right now, this could be the best character in the game. <laughs> I don't necessarily believe that myself, but a lot of the Japanese players believe she's like top two or top one. Smaller thighs? How dare you? 2MK bigger hurt box? Yeah, I think I think 2MK should probably be the first the first target. Alright, we'll go for range reduced. Nerf her stand jab. Yeah, I think we need to do something about stand jab. Increase it to a five frame, maybe? Does she have any other 4 frame lights? 2 LP and 2 LK? Oh, if she's got others, then that's fine. We'll just do that. Why the fuck... <laughs> why the fuck is her by far best light not got any penalty? Every other character in the game generally has, like, the fast light, which is 4 frames, and then the slow light, but has more range, which is 5 or 6. Alright. To be honest, if I was being really mean here, I would do this, but that might be too much. We'll go with, we'll go with 5 frames. Alright. Uh, Jamie. No, before any Jamie players chime in, we are not going to, uh, we are not going to make him start the round in level four. Make Breakdance a real anti-fireball tool. That's a good one. That's a good one. I've watched Jamie players fight the Guile matchup and I feel bad for them. I don't think, I don't think it needs, I don't think it needs a faster start up. I just think it needs to move more because right now he just sort of doesn't go anywhere. Make target combo available in drink one. Yeah. I can acquiesce to your request. All right. Um, that seems pretty reasonable to me. This, to me, this feels like the Honda changes where I actually think this probably isn't enough if I'm being completely honest to make him good. But it's what the Jamie players suggested, so I'm gonna let you have it. Take your meager buffs and move on. We've got two characters left to go. This one, we're gonna do the same thing we did to DJ. Uh, overall damage reduction. Same, exact same thing that we did to DJ. I'm also going to say... See, here's the thing. The temptation here is to go for a crouch medium punch nerf. But the reason that crouch medium punch is so obnoxious is a lot to do with this. The fact that it converts to so much damage. 
I think it's okay to stay the same. I actually think that the change we need to make here is that one. Suppressor should still be like a an anti like a like a kind of whiff punish tool if you do it raw, but you should not get the fucking stupid dodge effect if you do it out of a dry brush. Jump fierce? Oh man, that's true. Uh, oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Jump fierce is if I do these two, jump fierce is still broken. Hey, can we can we all just just for the sake of Luke, you guys can we all just pretend that we forgot how to count to two? Just just for Luke and then just move on like nothing happened? You guys wanna join me in this? Alright, just for Luke. We all forgot to count. But yeah, this is this is two changes. It looks like two to me, smile, exactly. Actually, to be honest, heavy kick doesn't really need it. I'm just gonna go for heavy punch. There we go. I only see two changes. Perfect. Good work, everyone. Yeah, what even is the number three? Scientists can't pin it down, so why should we try? Um, Alright, final character. Rue. So Ryu did get some buffs in the mini balance patch, but he still needs more, I think. We did, we did nerf Ken, which is kind of like an abstract Ryu buff, because now there's actually a reason to pick Ryu. Oh, Denjin charge stuff. That's a good call. That's a good call. Um, yes, that is a very good call. Um, how are we going to do this, though? QCF plus punch throws a fireball. QCF plus hold punch throws Denjin if stocked. Does that work better? It's a bit less messy. We'll leave it up to the, we'll leave it up to the big brains at Capcom to figure out the exact mechanics of this. But the point being... I think we, we all agree that the general concept that Ryu should get, have the choice of whether or not he wants to use his Denjin charge rather than being forced to use it on the next fireball. That's, that's what we're going for. So I won't get too bogged down in the details of how that change is going to work, but you, you guys know what I'm going for. Other than that, that's already a good buff. The ability to not spend... Because like Den, having Denjin charge massively increases his damage output from stray hits as well. So being able to maintain his fireball game without being forced to use up the charge is already a massive buff. So I don't want to go too far and give him like another huge buff. Yeah, I, th I think we'll leave it there. I think he's going to be one of those rare characters where only one is necessary because like, I don't know if you guys realize how, how huge of a buff it is. Luke took his second change? Yeah, that's what we'll do. <laughs> we will give Ryu only one change. And Luke's got three, and if my maths are correct, that averages out to two changes per character. All right, uh, and that is everyone. I, I think we're done. Street Fighter Six is now solved. Uh, so anyway, uh, those are my changes. I'm sure you guys are currently screaming at the screen that I don't know what I'm talking about and these changes are terrible. Um, but feel free to let me know down in the comments if you guys have got any changes that you'd like to submit. Uh, or maybe even more like you'd like to make your own lists. Um, yeah, let me know. And I will see you guys in the next video.